Welcome back to another episode. Today we've got Vash on. Vash runs a very successful marketing agency, advertising agency, and he also coaches other entrepreneurs with their mindset to really have a more fulfilled life. I'm really, really excited to go into some of these things that we're going to go into, uh, particularly when we were just talking off camera about some pretty fun and wacky stuff. Um, but Vash, just first of all, I want to say thank you for being here. Uh, and welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. You know, the the thing I picked up on you as soon as we connected, literally, what, 10 minutes ago was your energy. That was the first thing I I, I, I got from you. And it was just very, um, like, there's a, there's a sense of peace. There's a sense of, like, love emanating from you and just general calmness. Has it always been like that for you? Have people always described you like that? Or is that something that you've um, like honed over time? Thank you for that. Definitely appreciate it. It's always good to hear that, that actually people can sense this. And it definitely didn't come natural at all. This was like pure practice. Because I always tell people that whatever you practice, you become. So if you get angry people... They usually are angry all the time. They practice being angry. So you can just see them and you know that person is angry. They don't need to talk to you. You just sense they're angry. And I realized that the energy I was kind of, or the more, more importantly, the emotions I was feeling within that then I then radiated outside of me were not always the emotions I would necessarily want um, for others to sense, which was emptiness. Sometimes it was loneliness. Sometimes it was sadness or jealousy. So there wasn't definitely these feelings that you've described minutes ago, but I intentionally work on that. And basically I always tell people that uh, I truly believe now that the feeling is the secret and that everything we do in life is for the emotion anyway. Like people want to make the money, why? Maybe they want to buy a car, why? Maybe to feel significant, maybe to get emotional validation. Or maybe they want to buy a house for emotion of security. You know, so everything we do, even eating food, we do it for the pleasant emotion that is at the end of that experience. And I realized, okay, if I everything do for the emotion, is there a way to give myself the emotion now? Not waiting a year until I have successful business, not waiting a five years until I can buy my own house, for example, but can I feel the emotion now? And I started practicing these emotions that I believe I feel very good with these emotions, but also others feel good uh, around me when I feel that. And that's what I started to practice. Mm, that's beautiful. It's, um, it, it's definitely resonant. And it's, it was a, that was a very big shift for me as well. Like we were just talking off camera, how we both have done a lot of Joe Dispenza's work. And this is the new paradigm this is actually not waiting to have something in order to feel X. It's actually saying, okay, if that's the end goal, why not just have that right now? It's actually really <laughs> logical, right? When you, when you think about it, but people don't necessarily know that that's possible, right? To be able to um, change your emotions in that way. And for you, like, what's that journey been like? Because for uh, a lot of people, including myself, like you mentioned a bit of those, those other emotions as maybe more dense, dense emotions. If you look at like people like David Hawkins, letting go, you know, you've got this emotional scale with different yep. frequencies on it, with apathy, with guilt, with shame, with fear. What was it like for you actually processing and transmuting those emotions? Great question. So basically, I believe since we are young age, we are conditioned to actually wait for something to feel those emotions okay you would get a praise once you get ace right or once this experience happens you would get something once you have a birthday we will buy you that and you will feel happy for example so then people take it with them okay once i hit the business goal i will be happy once this project is over i will be happy once i'm more confident i will sell my services better these type of things, almost always waiting for something external to finally give ourselves the permission to feel that. And I realize I will be more 
time on the journey than in the destination. Meaning if I said, okay, once I buy the car, I will feel happy. I will very likely take a year, two years on the journey. I will be getting there. And then I will probably enjoy for a week or two the destination because then I become familiar with that. Um, and I realized that I need to start basically giving myself the permission to feel it now. And I, I, including myself, I believe a lot of people think it's weakness. Oh, but if I will be happy, then I will slow down. Then I will be complacent. But when I started practicing it, I realized it's the superpower. It's the fast track. Because if I feel happy, I will take more action. I will take smarter action. And I will also be more, when I talk with people, I will be almost more magnetic to them. Because when I feel sad or, oh shit, I still don't have it. I will be very like, I will take less action. And also I will take probably less informed decisions. So this is kind of what, what I had to realize first. And then what I started to do, big tool was meditation for me. Because many times people try to be happy, but the five senses tells them they are not. So they see themselves with the car, but if they do it with eyes open, they see in the garage, there is not the car. <laughs> they visualize the, the house, but they don't, they are not in the house. So the five senses are denying what they are trying to kind of feel or sense. And I just realized, okay, I will close my eyes and I would start work with those feelings. So I would just close my eyes, listen to music or guided meditation, which was back then the best tool for me. And I would just feel that, but not in my head, because many male like, or guys, they will always say, I love you with their head. They <laughs> rarely say it with their heart. And I was that guy. I couldn't feel with my heart. So I started practicing it. My best practice was breathing into my heart and feeling it inside here and then bringing a moment from my future or from my past that brings, let's say, the emotion of love, emotion of joy, emotion of inspiration. And at the beginning, the feeling was like, like a small ball, almost like a pin. It was super small. But every week, it goes bigger, bigger, bigger. Until now, it's almost like a ball inside of my chest. But it was just as a practice. You want to get better at golf, play more golf. You want to get better at basketball, play more basketball. So I would do this in the morning. This was first thing. But then a lot of people lose it throughout the day. So they create love in the morning. And then 10 minutes later, they're on their phone just arguing with somebody. They just lose the emotion they wanted to create. And I did it myself. I forgot. I was like, oh, I forgot I want to keep the love going. So I would create on my phone hourly reminders and I recommend it to everybody who wants to get better at this. It's just create an emoji or that will represent what you want to create or what you want to feel. So when I was focusing on love, I would just put hard emotion, uh, emoji. And basically every hour it sync and I would just, oh, let me tune into love for a second. So for, for a few moments, I would feel love again. Then maybe 15 minutes later, I would lose it. But in an hour, another reminder. And like that with a repetition, I just got better at feeling love instead of feeling anger. Beautiful. And um, it, one thing that you said, I think, is, is so resonant. Well, a lot of it was, but one thing jumped out, which was that it's a feeling, right? It's not a thought. And to be able, because thoughts, we have so much experience with, right? We have tens of thousands of them per day. So we're very familiar with that voice chatting in our head. It talks to us constantly. But then when we start talking about emotions, suddenly like they're a little bit more etheric mm -hmm. because they're not speaking in the same way. And if they've been suppressed, it can be challenging to sometimes feel them and develop that sensitivity, open up those senses, get more in, with your intuition. And so... For somebody who's at, like, let's be honest, like the way I look at this is like our collective consciousness of the world is we're just, we're all adding to that, right? And if you look at the collective consciousness of the world, I'm the biggest optimist in the world. I'd say we've still got some work to do, right? To, to raise our collective vibration. So if your base state is at 
say, you know, say you're feeling fear, you're feeling apathy, maybe you've got some repressed guilt. Do you say, okay, I'm just going to tune in, go straight to love? Or, or have you also worked with processing those slightly more dense emotions? Got it. So there are two ways uh, I basically do it. I've just had like three, four day seminar with 15 entrepreneurs in person, and we've been, done something similar. So all of us crave one emotion. For some people is love. For some people, it could be feeling of proudness. Some people had, I want to just feel confident. Some people had, I want to feel like I've created something meaningful. So everybody has one emotion we almost crave. And kind of the best thing or best visualization process I've done with these entrepreneurs was they just close their eyes and they visualize that they sit in their favorite place and they see everything they've achieved. Maybe they are 20 years old, older and they've achieved everything they ever dream of. They have the beautiful wife, their few kids, they have the house they wanted, they have the business they wanted, they had the impact they wanted. And now I ask them inside of this visualization, what would you be feeling in that moment? And whatever answer comes, it will be different for everybody, but that will be the primary emotion. And some people told me, oh, I felt so proud of myself. Some people said, I just felt so much faith in me. Somebody said, I just felt so much love, you know? So everybody gave almost different answer. Few were repeated, but there was, let's say, five variations. And that's the emotion I would be focusing on because that's the primary emotion we probably do most of the goals we set for ourselves. We just want to feel proud of ourselves, for example. But then I know there are some emotions that are in the way. There are few emotions that people feel on a daily basis. Some people might doubt, some people worry, some people have anger, fear. Again, different people have different emotions. But what I recommend, especially at the beginning, is to sit with them for the first time very likely in their life. Because what happens, including myself, my emotion that I used to go to was worrying. So I would start worrying mostly about business and I would either grab my phone, grab food or put my head down to work even harder. But I was always like escaping that feeling. Mm -hmm. I would never sit with it. And that, what I realized the feeling is like a little child until it gets our attention, it will get louder and louder. And until I sit with it, it will always be somewhere just running my behaviors, running my thoughts in a way. So what I recommend people is to be like a parent to a child. So let's say when the worry pop up, I'm no longer like, oh, let me do more work. Let me eat. Let me distract myself, basically escape. But I would be like a dad. I would get, come on, sit on my lap. Tell me, what do you feel? Man, I feel a little bit worried. Okay, worry about what? Just worry that, let's say the business won't work out. Okay, where do you feel it? I feel it around my stomach. Okay, tell me more about it. And within two, three minutes, the feeling loses its power. It's almost the baby that cries, but the moment you come, it stops crying and it starts laughing because you came. And within two, three minutes, I realize, wow, it's actually not that bad as I thought. Because I tell people, whatever you resist will kind of fight back. So if I am like, I shouldn't be feeling worried. I'm successful entrepreneur. I shouldn't be worrying. We are resisting it. And it's always like just a little voice in our head. But the moment we accept it, the moment we sit with it, it goes away within minutes. And, and this was kind of my process to find first the emotions we crave and then do the exercises I told you with hourly reminders, the morning meditation maybe. And then there will be few emotions that we feel daily, but we've never experienced fully. And there, I just recommend be like a, your parent. You wouldn't be like, like to your son, like you shouldn't be feeling it, man. I should, I want to get rid of you. <laughs> this is not what we would do with our baby. We would be like compassionate. We would be very understanding. And we would be something I would call holding space so they can just talk but you're not giving solutions. You're not like, okay, pump yourself up, change your state, you know, go have cold shower. We wouldn't be doing it to a baby. We would just 
say, okay, tell me more about it. And as they speak about it, almost it loses its power. And this is kind of my process when I am either coaching or in co with myself. Beautiful. That's so beautiful, brother. Thank you for sharing that. And I've never heard it from the perspective of actually we have certain emotions that we do crave. And that could, like you said, that can be very different for everybody. Yeah, I guess they all emanate around a certain frequency, right? And it's maybe a, a slightly higher one that we that we want to, to move towards. That's a beautiful way of putting it. And for something that I found on my journey, particularly at the start for anyone who's listening and thinking like, I thought this was a business podcast. Why are we talking about feelings? To, to make this like a little bit easier, even before the emotion, right? I remember when a couple of years ago, I knew like two emotions, like good and bad. <laughs> Honestly, like with one of my first coaches, he would genuinely be like, okay, what are you feeling? And I would be like, I don't know, happiness. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that helped me was to actually sometimes before even that, like not even labeling them because they're essentially feelings, right? Which are sensations. And what I love that you said is you would ask, where do you actually feel this in your body? Is it a knot in the stomach? Is it a heaviness in the heart? Is it an expansion? And that process of is like learning to start to dance with your own body and your own emotions. And it is in the body. Mm -hmm. It's not in the mind, right? And I'd love to, you know, I can see you're like clearly a very in shape guy. I think you're standing, you're standing up now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, I can instantly, I'm like, okay, cool. You clearly like value your physiology and your and your body so like I'd love to hear like what are some things you do to whether it's get embodied or like how or even just like how you think about embodiment in general for sure so first thing as I said I needed to learn to feel the good emotion with my heart Meaning a lot of people say, I'm grateful for the roof over my head. I'm grateful for my partner. What do you feel is just in their head, right? There is no, like, I, I'm really grateful when it comes from here. So for me, it was, as I said, in the morning meditation, I would just find the spot around the center of the chest and I would just play with it. Maybe bring photos of my uh, parents or loved ones or maybe some things I've achieved and I would just play with it to kind of get familiar feeling it then as I said during the hourly reminders I would intentionally feel it in my body the easiest thing was for me breathe into my heart then feel the emotion here and a little bit try to radiate it outside of you almost you focus on radiating outside of it but then I know my posture plays a big part I know if I'm lying on a couch, just like hinged forward. I know that I won't be feeling pro like proper excited because that's the posture of being tired or bored. So I value my posture. That's why majority of the day I stand, especially if I'm talking to people. And that's why I'm taking every 45 minutes a break so I can a little bit stretch I a little bit of jump and then I can go back because many people just sit for five hours and their focus just is down the toilet. Um, so these are a few things, but as you mentioned, like embodying is the key because you could be saying affirmations, you could be saying these things, but it means absolutely nothing if you're saying I'm healthy, but you feel unhealthy. If you say I'm wealthy, but you feel in scarcity, mm. there is big disconnect between the mind and the body. So if you do affirmations and you say, I'm confident, you better feel it. If you say, I'm wealth, you better feel wealthy. And then the mind and body are not in oppositions, they are aligned. Brain and heart coherence. Beautiful. Um, there's, loads of, there's loads of directions that I'd love to take this. I'm, I'm going to ask you some more about your experience with Joe Dispenza in a little bit. Before that, I'd love to hear what your experience has been like. So you coach and mentor 300 entrepreneurs in one of your businesses, which is Mindtrepreneur. Um, what's that? First of all, like, how did that come about? Because that's, an, first of all, like, incredible achievement to create that. So I just want to give you some love for the fact that you're being in service to so many people. And 
what's that journey been like for you you know who, what, what is, what's it like being a, a leader to that many what are some of the things that you know people come to you for help with I'd love to hear 100% so basically I've I've co-founded this with John Gabb who used to be who still is but at the beginning he was my mentor so he was the guy I paid to coach me based on my first uh, a uh, business which was the agency so he was there more successful than I was so I paid some coaching but he was coaching in a very different game way there wasn't like some scripts how to send emails or how to sell it was more about goals vision and a little bit the beginning of mindset back then I thought this is mindset and John Ford as well and Again, I believe really in the synchronicities and we've just became great friends. We've traveled six months <laughs> and in the val it's Valentine's Day. It sounds crazy, but basically we are in Costa Rica. His girlfriend is at, uh, in England and we are having few beers. And he, I, I'm telling him a story how I met few people who started business together. And he just locks his eyes in mine and he says, do you want to do this together? Because he wanted to kind of move towards group coaching and make it bigger than just the one-on-ones he used to have. And then, then we shake hands and it was so pure. There was no doubt. There was no how we are going to pull this off. It felt so right. So I believe it came out of nowhere because I never thought before that, that I would be coaching people. Um, so it came as a synchronicity in a way. And then we started and then, Again, we took very different approach that we really started coaching people and having a vision because many people were setting goals. I called that are not their goals, meaning they started setting goals of hitting certain number financially because the guru they were following set the number, but they were unfulfilled once they hit it because it wasn't their goal. So we started to really see people financially making it like in the industry but being totally empty when I met them in person. Their Instagram would look amazing, but their soul, when I met them in person, it was empty in a way. Uh, so we started kind of shifting and by coaching, you learn sometimes more in a way than the person you're coaching. <laughs> yeah. and, and we started evolving with the business. And this year in January, we've done first uh, mastermind in a person. So I think there was 15 entrepreneurs. It was in London. We rented a villa for 15 people for three days. And there we started to learn even deeper about their how really fears are holding them back, how they are not allowing themselves to win by not acknowledging their wins, always chasing, chasing, chasing more, bigger, but never being happy where they are in a way or grateful for how far they've already come. It was always about the destination or the journey. And as we with John continue to going deeper and deeper within ourselves, then we could go deeper and deeper within, with our students. And we shifted from, in a way, goal setting, planning to really going into the emotions part because that's where we realize all the, all the, the, all the really things lie in the emotions. Because I realized once I discovered this, my business is grew. I tell people like, when you master this, your businesses will skyrocket. Your relationship will skyrocket. Your health will skyrocket. Even though some people need to overcome the old beliefs like, but this is not directly connected to my business in a way. But you are the business. Uh, so emotions. And then last, this weekend, this past weekend, we've done one in Prague for 14 entrepreneurs. And we've went deeper on these emotions and I, I don't have words to describe it because there the energy was palatable when we were going like through visualizations or really focusing the emotions. You could almost sense they're smiling like if they never smiled. They loved harder. They just enjoyed life. We didn't say to them, don't be on their phone, but nobody was on their phone for three days because they were so present. The one day seems like a week because we were so present. So the day got longer in a way. And, and in a way with the entrepreneur, with our business, it's consistently evolving based on the feedback we are getting. So we no longer, we switch totally from coaching because we were doing still 30, 40% 40 business and 60% mindset in a way. Now we almost completely shifted because we know 
if we figure out and help them with the emotions and these things we've discussed so far today, they will figure out, they will grow everything in their life because any business tactic can be found on YouTube in five minutes. You know, the script, the sales script, everything could be found very quickly on the internet. But this inner work, that's something where having a coach can be invaluable as it was for me. A hundred percent. And I remember, when was this? Like two years ago, it was the end of the year. And I remember saying, okay, what course am I going to buy this time? And there were like a few high ticket agency, businessy ones. And there was this other course that was like about spirituality, collapsing timelines, quantum physics, light beings, like nothing I'd ever really experienced before. And it was also four times the investment of any of the other ones. And I remember being like, logically in my mind, this does not make business sense to do this because there's not, there's not even a, there's not even talk about ROI or, or business. However, intuitively and in my heart, I knew this was the step I needed to take. And it was, and it was a 12 month mastermind with coaching. And for anyone who's been in that position where you're at a bit of a crossroads or even you're listening to this now and you're like, damn, like there are these things holding me back in my business. I can tell you when I did that, my business just changed as a byproduct because I changed internally and your external reality is just a reflection of your internal state. The way you think, the way you uh, feel literally is restructuring your reality and what i loved you said you know how you founded the business synchronistically well th those things aren't coincidences right you're you have been architecting those situations for years doing the inner work so it's almost like i'd be interested to know like was it a surprise or you kind of like this is surprising but i also know why this is happening like it's an interesting kind of paradigm right yeah, 100%. And I realized the more surprised I am, the more I'm saying it's not normal. You know, when people say, oh, that's crazy. I received this check. It means that it's almost unbelievable. But I want to live from the perspective that it's normal. Like synchronicities are happening to me daily. And except, but I still want to express emotions that they are happening. And I believe the best emotion to express for myself is gratitude mm -hmm. because it means I'm not like surprised by it, but I'm grateful that it happened. So I might be, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. I know I've created it, but still thank you for it. And that way I'm almost telling the universe or whatever you want to believe in that kind of, I'm ready to receive more. It's, it's just like uh, you talked about at the beginning, feeling the emotion before it happens. Yes. If, if, you know, you're much more likely to be given a gift when you're already grateful, right? 100%. 100%. Every time I feel worthy to receive something happens. My girlfriend calls me, hey, I'm in front of your house. I baked cookies. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> you know, these type of things. And it could be big or small, but some people don't recognize or acknowledge them. That people say, oh, so she just baked you cookies. But I know that in a way, I helped to create that. Uh, and I think when you live from this perspective that everything is a gift, then you will get more gifts. If I give a person gift and he said, all right, thank you. I'm not going to give another gift to this guy. <laughs> but if he's like, wow, thank you. I really appreciate it. It's so nice from you. I will be I will make him and I will buy him another gift because this guy is so grateful. And that's what I've realized even among our students, among the 300 students, those who are really truly living their best life, I would say thus far, that they were grateful. They message you, Vash, John, thank you. They come on these calls and they express gratitude and almost it's almost like they get more because of it. But those students then might still be like, like just taking it almost for granted. Those are mostly the students that still have quite a lot of work to do. 
it's so beautiful as well because people ask me quite often about abundance right and they say how can i become more abundant how can i get abundance and it's obviously a big topic right but what they're really saying is how can i achieve financial abundance is what they're really saying which is a, which is a component of abundance but that's the key it's actually feeling gratitude feeling abundant and that is how you magnetize it to you 100%. and it's like it's like i wouldn't believe that until i experienced it even like if i'm honest with myself right so for you like these events and you know the in person stuff that you're doing do you see it going more in this direction or the more or more of the immersion in the future 100% 100% because the first the first event in london it was incredible but we were like okay it was amazing it wasn't like magnificent but this time i believe because we evolved because we put a lot of intention in preparing because the students that came were really committed it was just wow like we needed a few days with john to just digest it like because we saw this guy coming but different guy leaving like literally it was day and night and if you could like put it as one emotion i would say it was love they just radiated self love that then was love like in a way gratitude and in the immersion like we probably part of our business could be in the future once a month of doing these immersions because these guys leave their familiar environments. So they don't have the TV. They don't have the friend that always puts them down. They don't have the phone to get distracted. They're among like-minded people, which mostly they don't have around them in their hometowns. They're like just with other guys who are committed. We've done like, we've done some cold exposure. We've done morning, evening meditations. We've did saunas. We've done like sitting around fire and sharing stories. And I think for men, it was like a brotherhood, you know, because when was the last time people sitting around fire, sharing their journeys, what they've learned, how many times they went in a cold water with 14 guys who just weren't there as a team, as a one team. And I think they just came change. And we, with John, we were like, we need to do more of often this and more days even because the three days we would like to have one more day for integration uh in a way and a reflection so one day when we would more journal and just kind of share what we've learned so they can integrate but definitely moving i believe the direction because it's invaluable rather than just having few weekly calls over zoom let's say awesome bro i'm, I'm excited for your future and it, it's cool as well because it's manifesting and being creative right now as it's being spoken into reality right which is just so cool and i'm grateful that you get to look back at this when that's happening even more right it's just 100%. literally creating in the present so true man and i have even one time if if we have time for the abundance thing because i have people asking i have it even tattooed on my on my arm uh because i want it to be a reminder for myself because a lot of people tell me I want abundance again, as you mentioned in terms of financials. And I have a few points on that. I believe could anybody could benefit from first one, people need to first define what abundant means because abundant means every, like to everybody, it's different definition. Like what if for somebody it's earning 10, uh, $10,000 every month for somebody, it's thousand dollars passively for somebody it's million a month. You know, there is, not the one standard definition of abundance, but if you don't have one, how can you get it? If I don't know where I want to fly tomorrow, how can I get to my destination? So we need to first define what abundant means. Is it number? Is it state of mind? What is it for us? Is it that I can do anything anytime I want? Does it mean that all of my needs are met? Doesn't mean that I just don't have to work if I choose to. What is abundance? That's the first thing. And second, abundance is a feeling. There is a feeling scarcity, which is the opposite of it. But abundance is a feeling. When you feel abundant, you give. And it doesn't have to be money. It could be your time, your energy, small gifts to people. But so many people who are in scarcity, they hold on to things. 
Let me not spend too much. Let me not give too much. And as a result, they don't start the flow. So for me, I know I need to start the flow. I need to start giving so it can come back to me in a way. And kind of exercises I give to my students is, of course, you can meditate on that feeling. You can bring it up. But you have everyday confirmations of abundance. You open your fridge. There's abundance of food. Let's, let's feel it. You know, you look at Airbnbs because you're flying to a country. There's millions of Airbnbs. Let's be grateful for that abundance. You have shower. You don't need to count. Okay, I have only 15 seconds. Then the, run, then the water runs out. You can feel abundance for that. How many times we pay every day? Groceries, gym, food, then drinks. You know, we pay maybe three, four times a day, even when it's $1 for parking. But how many times people just pay? Oh, now I need to pay. <laughs> so they paid from this energy. But I realized this is just another confirmation or another opportunity to express gratitude. So I would be paying with smile because before they present the check, Inside of my mind, I said, I'm so grateful I'm paying for this because I'm putting money back into circulation so they can come back to me, multiply. And every time I'm paying, I'm doing it with smile. And that's just another confirmation how to express uh, abundance rather than express scarcity. Like, oh shit, it's too much. But you need to pay it anyway. Uh, so it's better to feel good emotions when you are paying. I, I absolutely love that. and. As a personal experience with that one for me, which probably a lot of entrepreneurs can relate to was when it was time to pay like VAT or like end of year tax or whatever, it would trigger so much scarcity, so much fear. And the thing is, is like these feelings are only coming up because there's an unreconciled emotion inside. Because if you don't have any scarcity inside of you, you won't feel scarce. It's, it's as simple as that. So like, now I use taxes as like the big one for me. So when I get to pay taxes, even like a subtle language shift makes a big difference. Amazing. The relationship with that is so different. Like you said, it goes back into circulation. It's like, okay, so many people complain about taxes, but would you rather live in Somalia where you can probably evade tax, but you, your life is probably at risk? You don't have healthcare. The streets are not safe or would you rather live in your country where yeah you pay taxes that goes into healthcare that goes into education that goes into your roads being clean and actually like it's a choice every moment is a choice you can choose to be in victim consciousness about it and if that's triggering like good or you can choose to be a creator and be like actually like like you said you're going to pay the thing anyway mm. so it's just like why not pay it with a smile, pay it with gratitude. I love that word. 100%, 100%. Because that's so true. Like how many things we take for granted? Like you use pavement when you go outside, you know, did you pay for that? No, you know, <laughs> you, you know, these are so many things, maybe primary education, you haven't paid for it anyway. You know, these are things that we take for granted. And as you said, you can just kind of resist it and then you pay it anyway and be angry about it for two weeks or you just pay it with smile and just say i'm actually grateful i can provide for my country or what i've done last year was i'm going with on this highway and there is a bit that is like new one so it's very new it's nice for the car and i, I tell my friend hey google how much how much costs one meter of highway <laughs> and i calculated that Basically, I, I paid for seven meters or whatever was the number. And I was like, yes, let's enjoy the highway. You know, this is what I paid for. And you can do it with anything. But I believe a lot of people tell me that I gamify life. I just make it as a game. I make it a fun. I reframe everything. So this Friday, a car before the mastermind, a car crashed into me. I was just standing and the car is reversing and crashed me. And I'm like, first 10 seconds what the fuck, this is inconvenient, he can't reverse, like what's wrong with him, this, and I had to stop, and I was like, this is universe testing you, man, because on this mastermind, you will be a leader for these people, but if you can't lead yourself during this situation, we know what you will be doing over the weekend, and from that moment, I just switched, and I resolved it with smile, it was so easy, 
I even got to inspire, inspire the other people who crash into me while I'm dealing with it, smile. But I just make it as a game. So when a difficult situation arises, I just see it as a test how well I'm doing. You know, at school, you learn, let's say, your language and you get a mark how well you are doing. Maybe you are B, maybe you are C. Okay, you know just where you are standing based on this. So the same is here. You know how well I'm standing ba based on leadership. Maybe I would get C. Okay, let me work on that. Maybe I got A, amazing. I really mastered this. So I see these things just a test from life to see how well I'm doing. I love that. And, and the gamification, I think, is beautiful because it brings in this like feeling and frequency of lightness, of fun, of play. And actually, like, imagine if every day when you sat down at your computer at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., you were like, I'm going to play today. Like I was just having a coaching uh, session and uh, he, the, who I was coaching, he runs a multi seven figure business. So the decisions he makes are, have a big impact on his team, clients, et cetera. And he realized that he wasn't actually like looking forward to going into the office and dealing with all of that stuff. Mm. Then he realized one time he started just like on this drive to work, he just started blaring like a song that he loved. And he was singing to it. He was like shouting at the top of his voice. And then when he turned up into that boardroom, he was talking to the CEO of a very big company. His energy was magnetic. He was lighting up everyone's day. He was smiling. Everyone else was smiling. They were having a good time. And the whole day just went flawlessly. He was in flow and like time disappeared. And it was all because his state initially was fun. It was play. And so for business, like you, because you also run an advertising agency, right? And I, I probably like quite a few people who listen to this will run agencies or might be coaches and stuff like that. How do you inject that fun into like that type of work as well? 100%, 100%. So there are a few things. Again, a lot of, I, I tell people first reflect guys, because many of you listening this, you have this dream life that seems so far away, but you always you already have life you once dream about. Because when I look back, I was like, wow, like a year ago, Vaj, he would be, wow, man, look at you. Like you are living an incredible life. So just a reflection, what my because I once dream of having being able to be free to study what I want being able to buy courses, buy mentors to study more. I once wanted to have my own apartment, my own car, and all of these things I already have, but you almost take them for granted or you always chase more and more. So just the reflection allowed me to be more grateful or more just in the moment. Second, you need to have a vision, you know, because if you just do it to grow the business, okay, let me grow it by 20%, 200%. It's just a freaking number. It doesn't excite you. So have a vision, maybe you want to take your employees to vacation to Puerto Rico, and that's something you want to do. And you start striving for it, and it will be much easier to achieve your goal because you have some driver, you have some engine, because the business can become routine. You know, instead of nine to five, it's nine to nine. That's the only difference, plus Saturday and Sunday. That's what I tell people, you know. You've created a business for freedom, but it seems to be you have zero freedom. And then the phrase I tell people, most entrepreneurs are, are in a prison, they have keys too. Meaning they put themselves in a prison, but they, they can free themselves anytime. They can shut down the business, they can restructure the business. But it's important to realize, guys, that you have the freedom we once have dream about. And then I do a few things. Most entrepreneurs have challenges every day. There is challenge with employees, challenge with something in the business, with finances, whatever it might be. But what is important is the question you ask after the challenge. So many, many people ask why this is always happening to me. Or they ask the question like, oh, this is terrible. Why it had to happen now? These terrible questions, which leads to discouraging answers. But my question first one, what's great about this? So when the car crashed into me, I asked what's great about this, that I have a car. <laughs> what's great about this is that nobody got injured. What's great about it is that the car didn't 
go away, it stayed so we can resolve it together. You know, I run Facebook marketing mostly, Facebook advertising. And if once all of my accounts got shut down, all of our clients' accounts, so we couldn't kind of manage the campaigns. Again, my old self would be in fear mode. Oh, what if they leave me? What if this happens? What if we overspend? My thing was, what's great about this? Mm-hmm. That last year I would do anything to have as many clients as I have now. What's great about is that I have team that will help me to resolve this. What's great about is that I can get in touch with my clients within minutes. You know, and then you just coming with these and all of a sudden it loses this big importance you've created. It loses this and you're actually smiling. And from this point of view, you can resolve the challenge better. And then you almost don't hope you will feel good. This is what I tell people. Like they almost hope they will feel good. But for me, it's being intentional about it. So what I do in the morning, I meditate, I have cold shower. This, these are my two things that get me kind of going. But I know after 45 minutes, I take break to stretch. I a little bit of do jumping. Again, it brings uh, the emotion. Then around my house, I have pictures of things I want to own or that brings me the emotion again because I will forget during the day the things I want to create. So next to my mirror, there is my six pictures of things that really bring me a lot of joy. Next to here in my office, I have the same thing. On my dinner table, I have a few things. So I have just these cues in my environment to remind me how I want to feel in a way or really what's great about my life. And then being happy or excited is normal almost because the more I practice it, the more normal it is. At the beginning, I had to work on this smile, but now I almost wake up with the smile because I've done it so often. Amazing, bro. And and it's funny, right? A lot of us, a lot of people are practicing a frown and that's why you have a frown, right? It's the, what you practice, you become. Exactly. All right. I'd love to um, shift the gear in this spaceship, that room right now for a moment. And I want to ask you a little bit about your experience at your recent uh, retreat seminar with, with Joe Dispenza. If anyone who doesn't know who he is, he, he's basically a, a, like a guide and a teacher who helps people to essentially manifest their, their dreams, but it could be anything from changing your health to creating a reality you want. And it, and it really all starts with a lot of the things Bash is talking about today, which is changing your emotion, changing your vision, changing your focus. And I'm also aware, like I, for example, if I come back from a plant medicine retreat and everyone asks me, oh, how was your experience? And I'm like, dude, like, I don't even know where to start. I'm also aware that it could be difficult to explain it. Sometimes it can create cognitive dissonance for people when they're like, I don't even know what you're talking about. So like, just to pre-frame that, like whatever comes to mind and you're happy to share. And it's, just, and it's also just um, selfish for me because I'm really curious. Like, yeah, how, how was that experience for you? 100%. And as you said, it's so hard to describe. It's almost even at the mastermind with the 14 people we had. We, they were so ecstatic. And I said, how are you are going to describe to your mom? What did you do if she asked? You know, there is no word that describes it, but I will do my best to do that. So Joe Dispenza, I've been really learning from that guy past two two years, I would say. And really, that's the person that resonated with me a lot because a lot of these, we can say spiritual things, For he has evidence for it. Because many of the spiritual teachers I heard, it was very intangible. I couldn't wrap my head around it. But Dr. Joe Dispenza was the first person I really found that had the evidence for it. So that's why I resonated. So then last year I did first of his week long seminar in Cancun, which was fantastic. And I committed to do at least once a year. So I did this February, I've done one in Florida. And basically it was absolutely magical because first of all, you have 1400 people who breathe and live for what we are talking about. And many of them done 10, 15 of his retreats. So these guys, You just speak to them and you feel amazing. It's almost when people say they're these drainers of energy, the people you meet and all of a sudden you feel tired and it was difficult. After hour with with these people, that's the opposite. You kind of, you can go till 4 a.m. and you're still going. And 
And basically, I am a big fan of the immersion as we discuss. And here you are weak with 1,400 people immersed in few topics and really practicing and mostly in meditation. So you are healing other people, which is just insane experience, like healing another person with your energy. I've experienced it firsthand. P person having eczema after our meditation, she has none on her skin. Just these type of things that just seems like unbelievable until you see them in person. So the teaching's incredible, the practice incredible, the relationships probably even more powerful because I was like, a, my intention was to listen story. So I would say, and I would lunchtime, let's go, let's go meet somebody. Okay, tell me your story. So, tell me synchronicities. And I like that. I met maybe 50, 100 people and they share their stories of what they've created, the life they live, the emotions they feel every day. And I realized, wow, so it's really working. So I found more evidence because the more evidence I have, the more I believe in it. Because many people say, yeah, I believe life is happening for me. But they say that when things are good, when things are not good, according to their expectation, all of a sudden that belief is gone. So I needed loads of evidence for me to be super clear that this is working, that people have experience with that. They have some memories with these teachings. So I would meet people, meet people, meet people. And before this event, I did joe's meditations for attracting love or creating more love with myself which attracted my partner just like that in my life just all of a sudden in a way and i just was like man i've done quite a good process i believe i i put some part of myself in the practice that could help other people so i just posted in his group just to share with the community how i've done it what is the result and then I'm at this we going event and I got a message from unknown number like, hey, we need to meet. I'm I'm Joe's assistant. And I was like, oh, did I do something wrong? Did I promote myself or something? You know, and so I meet and she says, hey, I love the story. Do you want to go on stage? I was like, you bet. Like, of course. Uh, so she so then next day she calls me. Hey, Joe is ready to see you. And now just bear in mind, I listened to this guy at least two to four hours every day past two years. You know, so I was just like, I, I was just immersed in this guy because a lot of people are dabbling. They learn a bit of quantum physics, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but they are never mastering and they're just intellectual knowing. But I said, I'm committing to this guy's teaching for the next few years. So now I'm going backstage and he's there. And I was like, wow, you know, and his energy was just incredible. Uh, he gave me a hug and we spoke for a few minutes and it was just magical, magical, magical. Then I could speak in front of 1400 people and it was just insane being on the stage because it felt so normal in a way, because I was just feeling so good, honestly, that the speech was so normal. You can watch it on YouTube, on Dr. Joe's uh, Dispensa YouTube. And what was interesting was that 1,400, from out of these 1,400 people, I would say at least two, 300 people came to me. Just thank you, because my heart was closed for the past 20 years. I was abused when I was a child. Finally, I understand. Thank you for inspiring me. And I, there was like, after the talk, it was like 6 p.m. I'm ready to go for dinner. And there was a restaurant like 200 meters away. But until I got to the restaurant, it was midnight and it closed because every two meters, it's like, oh, it's you. <laughs> I, I wanted to share this or I want to ask you this. And it was so beautiful and almost like eye-opening to see that almost closed hearts is almost like a disease that many people have. Meaning closed hearts is like that you almost can't feel love, especially for oneself, for yourself. Because I realized that once I started to feel love for myself, I became very magnetic. It wasn't that I will attract some girl that will finally fill a hole that I have. It was that I started to feel love for myself. And in that moment, I stopped needing or craving a person to give me the love. And from that moment, I became extremely attractive because I no longer needed something because needy is a very needy energy, right? It almost deter you need it. But when you are just feeling it naturally, it's almost very, very attractive. 
dude like my whole body is just electrified right now i can feel like how powerful the energy is in this i hope people listening can also tune into this and just like take a breath to take this in because it's it really is so powerful on so many levels and if it's cool with you i'd love to link that talk you did with dr joe you're showing me it before and it's been viewed like tens of thousands of times which is incredible um as you were talking so many synchronistic things that you have experienced i've experienced such similar things even the way you attracted your girlfriend it was like almost identical for me <laughs> and and that was the moment when i was like oh okay this stuff's really real <laughs> because you you create a new life right um yeah, honestly, I could I could ask you so many more questions. I want to be respectful of, of your time. And I know we're like approaching in the hour. So I want to ask you like one final question to, to wrap up, which is that if you take a moment to project into your future, it's your last day on planet Earth. And you've you've achieved and amassed and created everything that you you wanted to. And it's your last moment. You can't leave behind anything tangible or physical to your family, to your loved ones, to your friends, to the people you care most about. What you can leave them with is one piece of wisdom, one gem, one piece of advice. What would you say to them? I would need like 500 pages for that. <laughs> to, <laughs> to do one wisdom. One wisdom was almost, I would say this was a big one for me recently that I believe had big impact was you need to develop faith in the unseen, meaning in whatever you want to create, even if the five senses is telling you otherwise. What I mean by that is that many times you close your eyes, you create something you want, but then you open your eyes and your five senses tells you the opposite. You don't have the car. You can't touch it. You don't smell your girlfriend because she's not here. She's, you are alone, you know, but what you need to do is almost keep loyalty to the unseen reality you want to create. And if you can do it, it's going to happen. But if you doubt it, if you worry when or how it's going to happen, it's not going to happen. That is truth. That's beautiful. Um, and a beautiful way to, to finish this transmission, wasn't it? It was so much more than a conversation, you know? Um, yeah, Vash, just want to thank you from, from my heart to yours for this for showing up not just with your time but with your full devotion with your energy it's so clear to me how much you are just in love with yourself and the life that you're creating and I mean that in the most complementative way possible um yeah man just keep doing what you're doing man keep spreading this love keep spreading this joy it's uh, it goes so far beyond the things that we say it's the way and the impact and the way you make people feel. And I hope that, you know, people can feel that and they can feel the, even if you just pay attention, right? How did you feel before you started listening to this? How did you feel during it? And when you go in a moment, how did you feel after? And pay attention to that state because that is the guiding force, which is telling you what to do next so i just want to leave with that and for people to find and connect with you obviously we'll link everything in the notes and below but what was the where's the best place for people to connect with you and find out more about what you do yeah first of all thank you as well for the opportunity to share a little bit of my journey with everybody listening and also thank you for you giving me your full attention i can feel it from you your energy is so pure so thank you for for this and i believe the best way probably is my instagram uh, so if you can link it just somewhere below um that will be the easiest way to connect um 
And if you have any questions, whatever I covered, please let me know. We have also some free group with some courses that are totally for free. So anybody, no matter if they're entrepreneurs or not, they can view and get value. If you would be interested in that, just send me a message. And as I said, my, my intention is really to help as many people as possible to feel the way I do, because I haven't felt like that before. I used to feel lonely, empty, and just unfulfilled. So uh, I would love kind of more people to see or feel what I feel. Aho. Thank you, brother. Thank Peace you. Out, guys.